Airtight is just a nickname that I have from from uh, I read this book called Airtight Willie, and uh, that's a book that Iceberg Slim wrote. I read I read that book in like college, and I just liked the name. But I never really thought about it except for it was a cool name. And I, I Common started calling me that a lot, and it kind of just stuck. What, what do you think you were thinking of? When he started calling me yeah. that, back then his name I used to call him Cornbread, and I, you know I used to, I I like to get in certain vibes and stuff when I record, you know. So sometimes I call myself Pilo or Pepe, you know what I'm saying? Just just to make me think in a certain way and write a song a different kind of way, you know, stuff like that. I'm the next one. <laughs> I'm the one asking my questions for myself. Circumstance can't undo this. Oh no, it's got to be. That's kind of like the Blessing in Disguise album. I went through so much shit on that record. Like, from arguing with my label, you know, we recorded a lot. I recorded a lot of this shit in the beginning. At least most of it, like seven of the songs, were I wrote and had my band play it instead of us making it a just full on electronic track. I I went in and told the label this time I'm going to produce most of the record. And when I told them that, they were like, "Ah, you kept all up." And I was like, "Yes, let me do it." And they let me go in the studio and Electric Lady. And we did all these tunes. I put all this fucking work into this shit. Then we get cool producers come in. We put this album together. The next thing I know, this shit's bootleg. I hate everybody. I'm suspicious about everybody. I didn't want to do music anymore. I was just very, I went through a bitter time. But then when we started getting support from everybody liking it, it just really made me feel more confident about myself. Like, man, I really, stuck to my guns and did what I felt was inside of me, argue with this label, even though it got bootlegged, it just rings true that if I stay true to myself, nothing can stop me. Like, even even if they try to. I don't remember who said that too. That they want to bring it out? Yeah. No, if I were to bring that shit out, I would have to um, re-record all of the tunes. Maybe that'll be something that I'll do. But, you know, I went through so much on that record. Like, I don't even want to go back in yet. You know what I mean? Like, maybe I'll do a live album. Mm -hmm. That would be dope. And do Love for Sale live at the such and such. Maybe one day I'll get my tape back. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The original thing come out. Fucking love Casey, yo. I remember one time. <laughs> I remember one time me and Rob, because Rob used to play with me for years. He played with me and my band. And uh, we were in Miami and, and, and we were in the hotel just joking around, you know, singing Jodeci songs. And he was playing, pretending like he was Casey and, and, I, and JoJo. And then we would switch and I'd do JoJo. And I and went, hey, yeah, hey. And I swear to God, out of nowhere, we heard the real, ooh, yeah. And I was like, did you do that? He's like, no. I was like, you did that. Did you do it? I was like, no. Out of nowhere, fucking JoJo walks in the room. KC walks in the room with a fucking headband on everything. With like five girls on his arm, we passed out laughing, yo. It was a real, and, and he jammed with us for like a half an hour, like just singing all the Jodeci tunes. It was a great, one of the craziest shits that ever happened to me, yo. And he was like, I love your music, brother. Come on, let's sing. <laughs> and we just had a battle. It was great. <laughs> that shit was funny, yo. If you ever meet Rob, ask him about that shit. I bet you pass out on the floor, yo. I don't, that shit was funny. Thank you. Welcome.